So I'll be talking about automating the flat lamination process. And automation is, of course, quite a hot topic across all industries. But just talking about automation doesn't really get you anywhere. So you really want to make it into smaller pieces to understand how you can move forward in the future. So first I'll be talking a bit about drivers for automation. So what are the main reasons that people are investing more and more in developing automating products? Uh, why processors are investing more and more money in purchasing automated products? Uh, after that, I'll be sharing uh, sort of an automation roadmap uh, that helps you understand how we see that automation is going to move forward. And at the same time, uh, I'll be discussing a bit uh, where we are today, uh, what has already been automated, uh, also to give an understanding of what needs to be done in the future. And then in the end, uh, I'll be highlighting the main development points that we see for future automation for laminating. Uh, by the way, can you get the timer running? Yes. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, so the main drivers for automation applies very well for flat laminating, uh, also can be applied to tempering, basically all processes. Uh, so what uh, companies want to do is, of course, increase their production capability. Uh, better capacity, and especially better mixed production handling capability. And every day there are more and more glass types in the world. There are more and more uh, PVB foils, different kinds of foils introduced to the market. And at the same time, uh, their customers are requesting smaller batches, quicker deliveries, so it's getting much, much harder to answer to that challenge. Uh, at the same time, you of course want to improve your service levels. So when you get that very quick order, you want to be able to take that into your production, uh, do those couple of pieces without ruining everything else. Uh, through these, you're of course then able to improve your competitiveness. Uh, automation helps us not only increase your product quality, but keep the product quality stable. And of course, in the end, the result is that you want to optimize your production efficiency, uh, optimize your costs, uh, not necessarily take them to the lowest possible level, but to be on the correct level on the cost side. And being more agile for the market. And if we sum this up to one or a couple of words. So first of all, cost control. It's a very important part. Uh, the most important two points uh, from my perspective are mixed production capability and being able to handle that mixed production uh, with a stable and predictable quality. So that whenever you change your product, you don't have to be surprised that, okay, uh, now a couple of pieces have to be thrown out, but you can really rely that they come out okay after your process. And then, of course, it's about saving time taking human error out of the process, so taking tasks from the operator to help them uh, achieve same quality day after day and shift after shift. And when we talk about automation, it's quite easy to get into the discussion that whether something is automated or not. But it's actually not that simple, so automation is not something that appears to you overnight. So it's, it doesn't go so that now you have a manual line, next day it becomes a fully automated line. But there are certain development steps that have to be taken, and during those steps, part by part, we start automizing the process. And in the end, you reach the full automation stage. And this is now one roadmap uh, that we've been using to describe how automation is developing. Uh, what kind of steps need to be taken uh, to make sure that we're on the right path. Uh, you don't need to read all of these. The main point here is that here is the level of automation. And while we move forward these steps, the automation level increases. And essentially this means that in the beginning the operator has to do a lot of different things. And while we are moving forward these steps, 
the role of the operator decreases and the role of the machine and the automation increases. So in the first level, uh, you basically have some kind of control system so that the operator can control, tell the machine what they want to do. And while we automate the process, we start taking tasks from the operator. So for example, we're automatically lifting the glass, positioning the glass, uh, automatically cutting the foil to cork length to enable better foil edge quality, uh, better efficiency by utilizing the PVB foil. And here the most important point would be the heating and pre-pressing technology that enable a huge automation jump. And I'll be talking a bit more about that in a couple of slides. And while we move forward these steps, we continue adding features. Features like automatic trimming. There are some solutions in the market, but not one that would be fully capable to handle all kinds of mixed production. Uh, different kinds of dynamically adjusting recipes. And in flat lamination process nowadays, we are somewhere around this level too. So there are still steps that need to be taken forward. And next steps after these are increasing the amount of cases that we can automatically handle. Increasing the automation level with smart recipes and in the end being in the fully automated stage. So we are far away from only having the control system, but there are still steps that need to be taken to increase the automation level. And now if we think about the laminating process, so you can roughly divide it to these steps. First you have the glass loading, glass washing. After that you assemble and trim. Then you go to the de-airing process, which means heating the glass sandwich and pressing the air out with a nip roll. After that you go to the unloading. And of course, next step after this is then autoclaving. And if we think a bit that where we are today uh, with these steps. So here, this is just an illustrated picture. So here you got, uh, let's say, a relative level of automation, just to give you an idea that what the world normally looks like for a glass processor. So for the loading side, that's still usually done manually. Uh, there are some systems already available that can automize that, uh, but I would say that we need better and more flexible solutions for the loading. On the washing machine side, we've already got glass thickness measurements. Uh, washing machines are pretty much running completely automatically. Uh, when you go to the clean room, uh, we're automatically lifting the glass, positioning the glass. We are able to automatically cut the foil to correct length, uh, but the operator still needs to do the foil placement in many cases. Uh, most important part, from my point of view, is the heating technology. And then, in the end, manual unloading. And after that, we are feeding data to our cloud system. And I'll be discussing a bit more that what that enables us to do. Uh, but now, for the next five minutes or so, I would like to concentrate on the heating part. And the reason for that is that this is actually where you create the quality. So this is what enables you to have steady production flow or it can also make it so that you can never rely what kind of quality is coming out of your machine. And when we started developing new technology for lamination, uh, we of course considered multiple different options that what could be done, how the glass and foil could be heated, uh, how the pressing should be done. And uh, here are now a couple of examples uh, of the path that we took. So if we look at a traditional lamination furnace, it usually looks somewhat like this. Uh, on the top and bottom side, you've got infrared lamps that are the main source of heat for the glass. And usually you've got some kind of assistive convection system. But still the heating of the air is done uh, mainly with the infrared lamps. And the problem with infrared radiation is that it reacts differently with different coatings. So if you have a clear glass surface, that's actually quite an effective way of heating up clear, clear glasses. But whatever coating you add, adds complexity. So if you have a low E coating, the low E coating is designed to reflect radiation. 
So you're not able to actually heat the surface. If you have a painted surface, that's going to be absorbing all the heat. So it's a very complex mix that you're creating. Uh, here's one test that we ran when we were considering different options that what could be done. So on your right hand side, uh, you've got the test setup. So you have an infrared radiator, then you have a black surface and a low E surface on the same glass. And we are actually now measuring the foil temperature in between. And as an end result, you want to have a uniform heating and the foil at about 60 degrees. And when the foil underneath this black surface reaches this 60 degree limit, the foil underneath the low E surface is about 30 degrees Celsius colder, which means that it's not going to be possible to run these with the same settings in the furnace. And the difference is so huge that you need to make very, very big changes, very big adjustments to get this done efficiently. What this means for an average customer's production? Usually you have quite a complex production mix, and you're going to need a different recipe for every different coating, every different glass type, foil type you have. And most importantly, when you are making these changes, you always have to change the furnace temperature. And the main issue with that is that the process is not stable, and you always create a lot of change over time when you have to raise the temperature or cool the furnace down. So you're essentially wasting time, wasting capacity. Uh, the process is not kept at a steady temperature, which means that you cannot actually rely on what is coming out of your furnace. And there's always huge amount of human error that can go wrong. And at the same time, you're actually wasting quite a lot of energy because, for example, your low E coating will be heating up your furnace, so you will not be actually heating up your glass. And now if we think about the main drivers for automation, uh, this technology, I would say, really doesn't support the things that we want to achieve. If you were able to automate all this, keep the process steady, that would, of course, be a huge value-adding uh, thing. But it's so complex mix that it's completely impossible to automate all cases here, which means that it's really disabling your automation rather than acting as an enabler for your uh, automating features. Uh, where we ended up with, with our solution is a full convection heating system, and let's say as close to a full convection heating system that you can get. So we're blocking all the radiation as efficiently as possible, and as a result, we're actually able to eliminate the effect of the coatings altogether. So we're taking a huge part out of the mix that you have to handle. Here's the same test that was done with radiation. So you've got your black painted surface, your low heat coated surface, but heated now this time with convection technology. And when we end up in this optimal 60 degree range, uh, we are within three degrees Celsius in the fall temperature underneath these surfaces, which means that you can run this kind of painted glass or low E surface and a painted surface next to each other in the furnace and get the same end result. So it's a huge advantage when it's being compared to this traditional way. And uh, that's why we also ended up selecting this kind of technology because it really acts as an enabler for automation. The technology itself automates the process by a huge margin. So if we now consider how production planning looks with the traditional technology on your left-hand side and with the ProL technology, full convection technology on the right-hand side. So the production mix gets a lot easier to handle and there are a lot less variables that you can you need to change during the production. And most importantly, you're able to keep the furnace temperature always at the same temperature. So this process is very steady, uh, enabling this steady flow of good quality production to, through your furnace. But then the question becomes that how do we increase the automation level? And this is all about mixing modeling with analyzing huge amounts of data. Uh, what we did so far is that we have certain intelligence features in the furnace that can, in many cases, actually 
handles usually about 80% of any glass processor uh, production. Just by inserting the glass uh, sandwich thickness, we can calculate that, okay, what kind of speed you need to run. But now the question is that, how do we move forward? How do we keep adding more and more features that enable you to run more complex sandwiches through the line without having to do any kind of adjustment? Uh, it all starts with modeling. So knowing in which range we want to be. Uh, you don't need to go through the whole photos. And the main point here is that there are a lot of different things, a lot of different ways of heating to be taken into account. So you have to model your convection heat, the small amount of radiating heat that is coming from the furnace, and then after that model how it's going through the sandwich. And as a result, we're able to simulate what kind of temperature profile you're creating for which kind of sandwich. But the problem here is that the mix is still so complicated. You have so many different possibilities that the glass processor can run. From any kind of sandwich composition, you can have two glasses, one foil, you can have seven glasses, 16 foils, whatever. So it's not going to be possible to model all of these, and it's definitely not going to be possible to test all of these, and that's the main issue. And how we want to approach this is that we treat each laminating line as an R&D line. I think this was first said by Tesla's Elon Musk that they handle each car as an R&D car. And the approach is very similar. And it doesn't mean that every line that we deliver is different. Actually, it's the most important thing that they are similar and comparable to each other. But the message here is that we collect data from the lines and we are able to learn what kind of processing you need to do. So we are uh, contacting our machines to our cloud system. We are collecting process data, quality data, uh, raw material data, what kind of sandwiches you're running. And then we are feeding all this data through our artificial intelligence solutions to learn what recipes work, what don't work in the most complex cases. And of course, at the same time, we're really nicely able to visualize your current production to show you what you need to do today to be more efficient. And now if we think about where we want to be, from the loading side, we of course want to have better automated solutions and let's say better automated solutions for more and more people that are running the lines. But at that point, the most important thing is that we're able to get data that what kind of products you're running. We know what kind of foils you're running, what kind of glasses, what is the sandwich composition. That's the most important part. And now the things that we already had here before are grayed out. So moving to the, let's say, foil handling part. So we need to have better automatic foil placement, foil trimming systems available to help the operators so that they don't need to do it completely manually. Uh, on the unloading side, once again, better automated solutions. But most importantly, we also need good feedback on the end result so that we know with these settings what was achieved. And then in the end, by feeding all this data through our, cl through our cloud system, we want to be able to dynamically adjust your recipes based on what you're running. And uh, this is the way we see that we're going to keep adding more and more complex mixes, complex sandwiches, the production mix that you can handle automatically. Today, for most glass processors, most of your production can be already handled completely automatically from the furnace and pre-pressing point of view. But every now and then, you'll get this very difficult case that you want to run. And these are the ones that we want to keep adding to the mix that you want, you're able to produce. So to summarize, what are the most important parts of automating the process? So first of all, it's to have the heating and pre-pressing technology that really enable automation, that really simplify the process so much that it's possible to actually think that we can handle this huge mix of different kinds of uh, alternatives that are out there. Secondly, it's of course taking the glass foil and movement automation into consideration and taking that work from the operator. 
So automatically building all the sandwiches, trimming all the sandwiches. Uh, but if, if we are not able to automate the furnace part, you will still anyway need to have somebody operating the line. And that's why the most important part of the automation development uh, is this artificial intelligence-based solutions that can analyze through the huge amounts of data that we're collecting to give you the best possible end result. So from my point of view, if, if you asked four years ago, I would have said that the heating technology is the most important thing. And in a way, it still is. But after that, the future automation is really all about the ecosystem, that we're able to efficiently crunch through the data and to provide you with better recipes after that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Hi, thank you for the lecture. Um, can you comment on the speed of um, the convection oven versus the speed of a radiation oven? Uh, usually, when we're talking about clear glass, we're in the same range. Uh, if you go to very thick clear glass, then radiation might actually be a bit more faster. But if you add any kind of coating, especially low E coatings, so the convection oven will be much, much faster. So there's a very big difference in that. Thank you. Any other questions? Yep. Thanks for your presentation. Um, you remove completely the autoclave and uh, this, this part of the process. Uh, so when we want to automatize, it can be all the process from uh, the beginning to the end. What about this part? Well, autoclave is, of course, a very important part of the process. Uh, it's also very important that you do it correctly. Uh, but in order to achieve a good result, I think that the preheating and pre-pressing are the most important things. Autoclave, in, in that sense, the process is pretty simple as long as you do the process correctly. So, of course, you need to know what you're doing and you need to be loading the glasses correctly. But I see that where the quality is really created and what enables the autoclave to make good quality is this heating and pre-pressing process. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did, why don't you like the video, drop us a comment below, and share the video as well, since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Ciao!